now what i was talking about is uh, first one uh, proving ground torsion tracks okay then i am showing you about the crash performance you know? uh, how does a uh, crash looks like in the vehicle you guys might have seen lot of videos but i'll just show you one video okay now this uh, particular image talks about the crash test okay this is taken from youtube and uh, this is called as a frontal offset deformable barrier okay odb i will explain lot more details on this you do not get any panic i will explain you so this particular video has got two adults in the front and two child restraints in the back okay now whatever you are seeing uh, dummies sitting right these are the dummies this is called as a full frontal impact okay now whatever you are seeing here inside these are typically dummies which are uh, calibrated like human beings so this particular test is called side crash okay side mdb side moving deformable barrier this is hit at 50 km per hour speed okay now whatever you are seeing on the side it is called as curtain airbag so this is called as a side pole impact so vehicle uh, in, in the accident if the vehicle slides and hit any pole or something like that will uh, test understand how does uh, it creates damage to the passenger okay this is called as a sled test sled test is also called as whiplash whiplash meaning uh, whatever headrest is given on the rear side right that will tell you whether uh, it will create impact or not these are all called pedestrian tests AEB is autonomous emergency braking. AEE stands for autonomous emergency braking. So these are all from the crash related tests. Okay. Now we'll go back to the presentation. I think just a few slides are left out. Then we'll talk. Now what happens? Suppose uh, we have done all the tests. now we feel like you know something is, is really went wrong okay so what we have to do we have to quickly modify the design and uh, ensure that it meets the requirement again testing has to be done but now if you have to touch up on any design activity this is going to be a very costly affair because your already tools are cut you are uh, you have everything uh, uh, size shape then uh, space everything is frozen now whatever changes you need to accommodate it has to be within the available spaces that is where we land into compromise in the designs okay so if you don't do a proper engineering earlier so it leads to an issue with the later stages okay now i showed one image one uh, video about the ba uh, how the mass production happens i think this you can uh, so this is a typical tool and die of uh, baw okay these videos you can find in youtube you need not uh, worry everything is uh, in the source open source available see now this is a blank sheet sheet metal now it is placed in the tool so the moment it is placed you will get a uh, design part see now this is a tool and die and you get a uh, proper shape as per your requirement now this press weight whatever you are seeing it would be approximately around 2 ton 2 and a half ton something like that so these are the components of baw and all these things put together they do a spot welding
Now you see a lot of components are coming out in the mass production line. So based upon all this, uh, once this man mass manufacturing line is done, then the production activity starts, wherein uh, typically from uh, various suppliers, you get the parts and it is assembled at the original equipment manufacturer OEM. Okay. Now I want to look back and tell you what is the overall process, what is done. So overall uh, development of any vehicle, whether it is electric vehicle or it is uh, mm, conventional vehicle, you have to do an initial study wherein you need, you need to arrive at a benchmark how your vehicle should look like then you start your engineering design then make a mule and then do a bug study to understand how uh, your system is going to be uh, comfortable as compared to the uh, existing benchmark vehicles then you do a later uh, design updates and release designs to the suppliers for part procurement so that is a time when you see that a you know, lot of interaction with the design team happens, a lot of virtual simulation. Virtual simulation CA happens during the updated design stage and during the engineering design stage. So these are the two stages where extensive CA work happens. And once CA work happens, uh, it, uh, the frozen data is shared with the suppliers. And uh, suppliers, once they give the data, we start creating something called as a testing rules. So these testing mules has to meet uh, durability and regulatory requirements. So durability and reliability, both are uh, quantifiable terms. Okay. So when I say durability terms, it is typically the proving ground, what I was referring to. And when it comes to regulatory requirement, I was referring to the crash study or breaking test or something. Like that. So once all these things are done, we'll go with a pre-production. So pre-production, what happens is, uh, once you get all the parts and once you optimize the process of bringing the parts together, assembling it, okay, that happens during the pre-production. Post-production, you will try to refine what and all areas to be improvised. Then later you do something called start of production. Typically start of production is a line formation. Say for example, you have to have the chassis first, then all the body in, body in white panels will come and sit on that. Hmm? or once you need to have the BIW, above that you will have a body side panel, then you will have an engine. So all that process testing will be done during these two pre-production and post-production stage. And then you do a SOP or start of production after this particular stage is frozen. So uh, this was the overall process, what is followed for development of any vehicle, like a engineering conventional vehicle or an electric vehicle. Now in electric vehicle, the only difference would be uh, coming to the engineering design or updated design then supplier part procurement and testing mainly this particular area you have main challenges these two areas why because uh, there will be a lot of electronic components used in the system so electronic components would be like approximately there will be around eight cpus in the system so all the eight cpus uh, electronic components you will not be able to identify whether it is a defective part or not until unless you test it so you have to have in the before the start of production, you need to have a method of how do you check the validate the component before you use it in the mass production. There will be some instances where you know uh, you get a PCB board which may not work. So how do you ensure that it, uh, it is a proper PCB? Okay. So there will be some basic tests like input signal, output they will check. So those kind of things are well established before it gets into the mass production. So this is the overall thing in which uh, when you look at our uh, very specific to CAE domain, uh, we will be concentrating more on the engineering design. We'll be more concentrating on the updated design. Then all other things will be outcome of that. Say for example, if uh, CA person does simulation uh, during the initial stage and during the updated design stage, uh, uh, all these areas will be outcome of it. Say for example, you have done durability analysis. So once you freeze everything, you say that from CA, you don't see any sort of issue in durability. Then until unless they do testing at this stage, which is like you know six months or seven months later, you'll not come to know what is happening in that particular vehicle. Suppose if there is an issue here, 
again it will come back to the updated design you do understand what is happening in ca and then you again go back to that okay hope you have the context set